big article in the Wall Street Journal today, which, by the way, is owned by Rupert Murdoch, so kind of interesting. But, you know, they still have to report the news, whether they like it or not. Tucker Carlson has secured a major round of funding, and this is first in what is expected to be much more. It's $15 million, so, you know, not not 100, not 200, but he is said to be looking for hundreds of millions of dollars. And so this is kind of a step in the right direction. I want to tell you a little bit about the guy who's giving the money. He's somebody who kind of had a, a career as a, a Democrat. He was somebody who worked at some major uh, banks like Bank of America. He was also at the very uh, fancy law firm. Was it Wild Gottschall? I believe so, sort of a white shoe firm law firm. And all of a sudden he had this epiphany Epiphany, this is a Mr. Malik, Omid Malik is his name, He Omid Malik, he had an epiphany when March 2020 hit, and he said, wait a second, like, what's really going on? Do we really have the freedom of speech that we all thought we had in America? Quick reminder, make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell as well. Make sure you subscribe. I'm live here every single day, and I believe in freedom of speech for sure, and I believe in my ability to say what I think and to present opinions that I believe in, something that I know Tucker does as well. And so him going out on his own, what's interesting here, and one of the things that is mentioned in this article with the investor who's putting forth $15 million is that what we've seen in conservative media is that you have a lot of these sort of small channels and upstarts, et cetera, but they really haven't condensed into anything massive like Fox News. But Fox News, of course, had the sort of brain power, if you would, of Roger Ailes combined with the deep pockets of Rupert Murdoch. We've seen what's happened since the brain power left, right? The deep pockets... Well, they're deep, but you don't have the same kind of influence anymore. Moreover, you don't necessarily want that. I mean, in fairness, right? Do we want to have one network that's sort of representing all people? I don't believe that that's correct either. And so Mr. Malik came to this sort of realization that we needed more diversity in terms of viewpoints and that conservatives needed to be heard too. He apparently moved to Florida, smart move, during March 2020 out of New York City, and he started hanging out with some Republicans, and he started hearing more and more about this. And so he became, if you would, sort of an anti-woke. He saw ESG for what it was. Vivek Ramaswamy, you know, has been very much out in front and center of that whole issue, having come out with that book, Woke Inc., a couple of years ago. So he started paying attention to this and started saying, OK, like, I think we need to kind of make a difference. And he's been taking some initiatives as a quote unquote angel investor, sort of in that private equity round, helping some of these conservative things to launch. I believe he did have some participation in the uh, company that wants to be the oh, I don't know, the conservative version of Amazon right now, and that just went public via a SPAC. And so this is another sort of $15 million worth of seed money to help Tucker out and Neil Patel, who is the partner with Tucker in his company. And they have a company, by the way, Tucker's company is called Last Country Inc., registered in Nevada. And so the thinking is that this money will help support them in terms of being able to do more videos, which you can offer on a subscription basis. Hey, it's Again, Tucker Carlson. He's doing you often hear things. people say the news is full of lies. Almost every But day. most of the time, that's not exactly right. Much of what you see on television or read the New York Times is in fact true in the literal sense. It could pass one of the media's own fact checks. Lawyers would be willing to sign off on it. In fact, they may have. But that doesn't make it true. It's not true. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie, a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Facts have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective. You are being manipulated. How does that work? Let's see. If I tell you that a man has been unjustly arrested for armed robbery, that is not, strictly speaking, a lie. He may have been framed. At this point, there's been no trial, so no one can really say. Yeah, you, you know, he's right. I mean, the, the news, news is incredibly biased. I've worked in it my entire career at various networks and seen exactly, shall we say, how the sausage gets made. It's, it's not pretty. And there is a bias. I would say in, in deference to Fox, actually, that was the first place, at least when, when Roger was there, that was the first place I was at where I had a little bit more leeway, right? And I could really like say what I thought. I, I would do it at Bloomberg and like, you know, they'd come down on me pretty hard. Why did you, you know, why'd you say that? Or why'd you have to have that debate with that particular person? 
And so I, I got the feeling that we were there sort of to support a certain narrative, shall we say. I, I'm just being completely candid and completely honest. I saw it at other networks, you know, where they choose to run certain stories and they would not run other ones. And certain pitches would be accepted, right, that you put forward and other pitches would not. And so actually, I did actually feel some some liberty when I got to Fox to kind of just say, OK, well, like, I'm going to be myself and I have an opinion and you're going to hear it. And it's not going to be as micromanaged. That's That said, it was kind of micromanaged. I mean, every single commentary I did, it was so annoying because, you know, I just like to talk. I don't like I have to write it all down. And then read it from a prompter. I'm a pretty good prompter reader, by the way. I bet you couldn't even tell if I was reading the prompter. I, 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 it's a skill. It's a skill. Anyway, it, I, I just hated that. I hated that because to me it felt phony. It was contrived. And I want you to know me, right? Like you should know me as I am. And maybe I say some things that might ruffle some feathers, but isn't that good? Like shouldn't you have that spontaneity? Cable afforded, certainly in my career, more of that spontaneity. Because when I was at the networks, they scripted everything like to the, to the last. I mean, literally, you would have multiple editors review your script. And it's like, ooh, the tonality of that verb or this adjective. Well, let's use this. Let's use that. I mean, it was just annoying. And it's all for like, what, a minute 20? You're like, oh, I did all that work. And now you're rearranging my entire script because, you know, that word maybe was too edgy or something. And so that is network news in a nutshell. You have way too many people, way too much money wasted on a 22 minute show. Right? It comes on at 630 every night, ABC Evening News, CBS Evening News, NBC Evening News. I've been on all of them. <laughs> and this is how it goes. And making matters even worse on the rare opportunity that you get to do a live shot, they'd count you down. You'd get nine seconds. God help you if you went to 10. I mean, you, you would get the wrath of the executive producer. Oh my gosh, because you ruin their whole show. If you go like a minute, forget a minute, what am I saying? A second beyond where you're supposed to be. Everything is so timed out. Well, that's no fun. So I actually loved it when I got to cable. I mean, even if you still had scripts, at least there was a little bit more wiggle room right? Because not everything was so highly scripted and you had interviews, et cetera. I got to Fox and really felt more breath of freedom until, well, you know, I liked to ad lib perhaps a little too much. And then eventually they said, no, 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 you got to script it. <laughs> they weren't going to let me do that. So that's why I'm happy here. I can ad lib as much as I want and you guys are okay with it. And, you know, occasionally maybe I'll say something that will get me in trouble, but hopefully, um, hopefully just with you, right? because there's no management to get in trouble with. And that's, that's the good news. And I think that so many creators and, and people who have opinion right now, they're of the same mindset. Like why work for a network where you're going to be micromanaged and everything's in a prompter and they want to control your opinion. And Tucker's right. I mean, they, they only want to present certain facts, facts that actually advance their own narrative. And hopefully you're getting it all here. Hopefully I'm doing my best to present both sides because I actually think you have a better argument if you understand the other side. All that said, I have a point of view and you'll know it, right? Like I, I'm very frank, I'm very open about that. And I think that's the way that we all need to be in this changing industry. And I think Tucker is very forward about his points of view. So I think this venture of his can actually do incredibly well but what I'd like to see is it be something onto itself, along with plenty of others. One of the points that is being made by Malik, Mr. Malik, is that, and I'll just quote from the article, which was in the Wall Street Journal, and I totally agree with him. I will actually explain this a little bit more. But he said, what has happened up to now is that in these conservative businesses, you've had a, quote, rich benefactor who has an ideology, right? Right you put a company into business, but then there's no institutional support to continue financing that business. And that indeed is actually the case because you look at some of these businesses and I'm not going to name names. I mean, Fox is one thing, right? And they've got all the institutional support and they get the real deal behind them. But I look around at the rest of the conservative media landscape and it's incredibly like splintered and fractured and they don't have that institutional support. They don't have the people that can really help them from a financial perspective get to where they need to be. And that has to change, I think, if you're going to start to see 
real competitors to Fox out there. I think that Tucker's pretty serious, you know. Hey, revenge can be quite a motivator, right? I, I think he's pretty serious about taking on Fox, but not just Fox. Like, this is, it's not just Fox, right? It's something more. And I think the more you have these diverse opinions out there, I'm not saying, like, everybody has to subscribe to my way of thinking or Tucker's way of thinking. By the way, Tucker and I disagree on a lot of stuff and did when we were at Fox, and we were on at the same exact time. <laughs> I was on the little redheaded stepchild <laughs> network Fox business. He was on the big kahuna, but we were both on at eight o'clock. And, and I remember Venezuela, for example, we had very differing viewpoints on and plenty of other stuff. But the point is, is you should have that sampling, right? Isn't it great as an American to be able to go to different places and hear different points of view? And you, you see that. And by the way, liberals as well. Like, I want to hear what the liberals are thinking and saying. And I, I want to hear their messed up logic. It's important. I'm going to show you some of their messed up logic today as we talk about Israel and the hate, the hate that we're seeing directed at Israel from so many young Americans, including some Ivy Leaguers. We can talk about that. But bottom line here is the media industry is changing. Fox News, I don't think, has the capability to keep up with it. As I said, you know, everything is still very managed, maybe not to the same extent that it would be at, say, NBC Evening News, but it is still managed. I had to turn in every single commentary, and there were times when you'd get edicts. I remember the George Soros one. This one was weird. I still don't understand it. There was, like, for a while where you just couldn't mention George Soros on the air at all. I still don't know what that was about unless he was threatening to sue them and I just didn't know. But you get these like random edicts or suddenly somebody that was a guest couldn't be on your air. And you're like, well, well, why? Like, this is a friend of mine. This person has a really interesting point of view. Like, why can't I have them on? And that kind of micromanagement did for sure exist. I'll tell you this. I had not seen that in previous networks. Yes, they made you script everything. Yes, they agonized over every single word, but you wouldn't have these sort of major blocks. Like this person has been vetoed and you would get a lot of blackballing at Fox. Like somebody in the conservative community stepped out of line, whatever, somebody didn't like what they were saying. Suddenly they couldn't be on any show and you're always scratching your head going, well, wait, why? And they go into a, a penalty box for a little while and then they'd eventually come out and you're like, oh, so-and-so's out of the penalty box, who knew? And I rarely, knew or understood the, the background to those things, but these edicts would come out. So again, that's what I'm talking about in terms of micromanaging. While it may not have been to the same extent in terms of the copy, et cetera, that you would see elsewhere, it certainly still existed. And I would say, despite all that micromanaging, they still found themselves in trouble. And by the way, the micromanaging, I should also point out, really came after the founder, creator, Roger Ailes, was gone. So that was when the sort of hysteria came in. You had a bunch of middle managers saying, ah, you know, I want a little more power here. Let me, let me make sure I get to see Trish Regan's script before she gets on air. And we're doing this to protect her. Of course, we'll, we'll totally sign off on a script and then feed her to the wolves when the time is appropriate, <laughs> which is what happened. But I stand by what I said, by the way. We never should have shut down in March 2020. I tried to warn the president that night. I tried to say, listen, it's a trap. And you're going to wind up hurting yourself, your economy, your political chances, et cetera. And I was right. So I, I stand by that. And I appreciate what this gentleman is trying to do, do with his company. 1789, that's the name of his company. And it was named for the year the Bill of Rights was written. So kind of a neat a neat thing to think about. Um, again, he's, he's basically trying to equip some of these more conservatively aligned companies with the right kind of seed money and infrastructure. Infrastructure so that they can move on to bigger and better things. Um, a friend of mine who's actually going to be on the show next week, a gentleman by the name of Chris Buskirk, founded an organization called Rockbridge Network, which is mentioned in the article as well. And Chris, well, he'll tell you himself. I mean, he's got some really big ideas on how we can learn from other communities that have come here, including immigrant communities that have really like dug in and created their own kind of economic universe. And his feeling is, and I've talked to him about this in the past, I want him to explain it to you in person, but his feeling is conservatives really need to double down on helping themselves and their own community. Because by the way, we make up half the country, do we not? 
right? Half the country. So you can't just blackball everyone like Hillary Clinton wants to do, you know, deprogram us all. So this is a good thing. I'm, I'm happy for Tucker. I think the world needs more of this. I think there's a huge opportunity to really help affect change here. Hey everyone, Trish Regan here. If you enjoyed that clip, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Just hit that little subscribe button right over there. Did I do that right? Uh, Not quite, but you know where it is. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get the alerts, and I'll see you back on the show.